Welcome to readtheticket.com. Today we're going to talk about Wyckoff 2.0. Richard Wyckoff logic mixed with GAN angles. Quite simply why you should love it. Here we have a chart of BA Boeing. A big stock. We're showing great action. Why is it great action? Because the, um, the market shows massive causes. generate an effect cause effect a sideways consolidation or reaccumulation and a markup cause an accumulation continuation and a markup the reason why you must have a cause before you get a markup is that um, composite man must take time to accumulate positions in his portfolio before he is happy in the selling of stock to mark up prices. And once again here, certain portfolio managers readjust their uh, portfolio, some sell, others buy, and in the end you get an accumulation, see prices go up. That's understanding the supply and demand. But on, a, on a much closer level, for example, we've just had a big rally up here, and we're trying to understand this pattern here. Is it a continuation or reversal? Well, after this point here, you can look back and say, aha, here we have a buying climax. Here we have a last point of support. Here we have an automatic move, a secondary test. Once you get that secondary test, on the buying climax, you know, and then you can pretty much look back and sort of say, okay, yes, the secondary test does confirm a buying climax because you cannot really have a buying climax until you get a secondary test that fails. Because, you know, you might call this a buying climax or that's a buying climax or this is a buying climax. You need to look at the construction of a pattern. And really, what this simply is is that people, you know, the uh, they would say the um, dumb money referred to the public, they get in too late, push it up. And there's been a sell-off, profit-taking, automatic move, a bounce, and a secondary test. Now, after a secondary test, you have to what, learn to what to see what will happen after it. Are we going to get a sell down? Or are we going to get more accumulation? So what actually happened here? Draw our trading ranges. Color for you. Here we actually had a test, a minor spring. There was no strength after that test, just a bounce. Here we had a um, another test, but we probably call this a spring. It was tested here, so it rallied up hard, and another retest there, the test of the spring there, and then we had some strength. Okay. Now we've got this weird little sell-off here. I think it was probably a news event in the market. It sort of upset the um, the bullish plan at the moment. So that so was actually a, another test of the spring, because here's the spring here. Demand was proven at the spring. And the spring is not really a spring until it's sprung. So you can't, you got to be very really careful about buying at this level here. You really have to sort of say, okay, here we go. we've got a, uh, a penetration of support. Is demand here? And demand proves itself handsomely because it pushes prices up, and and the uh, sellers have another crack at it, selling it down. But da demand stands up and say, "Oh no, you don't. We're going back up here." So that is a very nice spring. You get another test of the spring here, rather than an extreme one. I think that was a news event. I can't remember what it was. But now we get, the other thing too is we get this tight consolidation here. So price charges us up. It's got some strength on the side here, some good volume up here. A price charges up here and pauses. What actually happens here in this little absorption area here is that all the folks that were uh, trying to sell down here, they were trying to slow the price going up so they could get out without losing too much money. So they were they were probably shorting here, and all the shorts were having a go, ah, oh, this is going to go down. But they realized the demand was too good here, and the last chance here. So the absorption here is really them trying to cap prices so they could try and get out after entering around this area here. And once that selling was done and absorbed by the demand, the, uh, the prices were free to be marked up where they are headed today. 
One of the most important things in um, in the Wyckoff language of the world is understanding the cause and effect, uh, effort versus results. Um, Wyckoff would always look at a chart the same way any technician looks at a chart. Uh, an Elliott Wave guy, does the Elliott Wave fit? You know, he would sort of say, okay, if we have a cause, we've got a, a, um, a build-up of energy. We've pushed, just imagine a spring being pushed down, the tightness here. You say, if this is a true Wyckoff logic chart that allows me to, to examine demand and supply, I want to see the cause that represents this length here, and I want to see the relative energy release. There's no point having a nice tight cause and a wider cause and have no energy released. That wouldn't really qualify as a Wyckoff chart. You really want to see the powers of supply and demand working through the chart. So obviously when you when Wyckoff will sit down and say, oh, I've got a base here, I've got a build up, yes, I've got a tight pattern there, supply and demand building up, yes, I have a release, ah, we, we have some demand, demand and supply powers working here. You would have come to this stepping stone count. Now this is another a base pattern, a stepping stone count. Um, to work out whether it's going to explode higher or what have you. So at the moment, when it, a stepping stone count, let me define that again, just like a, um, your garden deck steps, you step on steps to climb higher, price goes up and bursts, it goes, it goes up, reaccumulates, goes up, reaccumulates, until it gets to the end where, in a pattern like this, that uh, reaccumulation is not the theme of the day, it's actually distribution. A distribution would have much more aggressive heavy volume on this side with no effort going up. So on this particular case, I said it was reaccumulation because the volume showed uh, pressure to the upside and tightness here and showed the, the, um, the sellers getting out and then we actually had the explosion up because the, mate, the way was made clear. Now the, that's, that's a quick logic of understanding the Wyckoff demand and supply pattern and I encourage all uh, old and young to learn all about that because you really do see the demand and supply working and once you do see the demand and supply working you can see who's going to win the battle um, and the, obviously the breakouts more importantly it teaches you to judge a chart uh, that actually has movement potential now I've I referred to this why are gain angles important well gain angles are a measure of time and price for example um, time and price, so you might you have one unit of time to two units of price, or you might have two units of price to one unit of time. Obviously it's more attractive to have two units of price to one unit of time. That means you're getting two points of price gain to one, one unit of um, time. So you're getting two for one. And it's obviously even better when you're getting four for one, or eight for one, or twelve for one. Now again, I reckon this was GAN's best uh, investment, was the, or best creation is the GAN angles. And I can guarantee you one in a hundred use them. Now my chart here, I've used, I use traditional again, um, logic where you set the chart. Here's a square chart. The chart is time to price one to one. It may not look square to the eye because we've actually been using a bit of fancy stuff. But ideally what it says is that the price units of you know one dollar or whatever it is, it might be actually 75 cents because it's done on a back calculation, is equal to a time unit. Here it'll be a day because the chart's day time. So I'm saying here, if I want this chart to be a one to one, that means the time and price have to be equal in movement. It has to be squared. And here's my um, statistical data to tell me yes, we do have a one to one chart. Um, periods periods to price, we've got 100, well, 1650 periods to 110 units of price with the height, sort of stuff like that. And it's all done down with our statistics here and our little mathematics to work out. A squared chart. Why do you need a squared chart? So you can draw a 45 degree angle that is true. I'll say that again. Why do you need a squared chart? So you can draw a true 45 degree angle. Now I do understand a lot of software packages allow you to draw um, GAN angles at 45 degrees that you know aren't at 45 degrees. And so you can you know, fit the chart. It's actually more attractive for a GAN student to use a 45 uh, you know, a squared chart. Okay, enough of that. Let's get have a look at So let's have a look down here. I'll start at this point here. I'm going to use our JavaScript drawing GAN angles. So these are the ones that aren't, that aren't so they're just there to find stuff. Okay, here we have here. 
First thing to do with GAN eagles, you really want to pick a high and a low to put them on and see what they look like. And you want to see if it's catching price. Just like if you go out there fishing and you got your rod out, are you catching anything? No point in using something if you're not going to catch. Get another rod. Find another point. When you're putting GAN angles on a chart, you want to first start off with a low. Right? It might be a sudden climax or whatever the low point is. The, the second point to consider is the um, last point of supply before price takes off. So here's a little consolidation. Price breaks up to a new high, and this is the last point of supply. Here's the last point of supply here before it breaks out. And there's a few others up here you can use. The reason why you take the last point of supply as well as the low is because this is the start of the impulse move. This is where things change. This is where the, the sellers have said, oh my god, we have to get out. It's going up. Okay? This is where things change. This is the change of behavior here. See? Change of behavior. Okay, so we put our little gain angle here, and I say, okay, what are we catching here? Oop. Okay, we're going to. Obviously, I've used my Wyckoff logic, and I see a nice tightness of base. I'm thinking, okay. They had a go at when they had the price action and time action had a go when it was at the 45 degree angle. You can see a little bounce up there. But obviously something in the news or something that missed the, missed the market dragged it down. But then you can see there's deliberate demand along the, um, this is actually the uh, two units of time to one unit of price. This is a two by one, one by one, and the uh, one by two. So this is a, the red line is the 45 degree angle which says one unit of time is equal to one unit of price. So this obviously, when you've got a base pattern like this, and you have tightness here, tightness means in the chart pattern that the um, orders placed by the big boys are not wide. So when a big boy places an order, actually I might have an example of that, I'll just, um, big boy, I mean a big boy, what does that mean? That's, a big boy is like a whale account, that's like your um, black rocks and what have you. They, um, they play as an order, they actually give them the range. If we want to buy Apple 10 million shares over the next week between, you know, under $110 and preferably not below 100 And the reason why they put a lower level in is because they don't want to spook the market. They don't want a situation so we, we want to buy everything under 110 and have the market somehow force the market down uh, too, too much below 100 because people think they're selling. They want to keep the market in a tight range. So when the orders come in, and the range is 100 to 110, that might be tight, tightness of the market. So they're really trying to accumulate with a tight um, with a tight average price. Just like if you um, stagger as a retail trader into a, into a position, you might buy five positions, and then you'll end up with an average price. What the institutions do, they'll send their orders off to their institutional broker and say, listen, we want to buy 10 million shares over a period of you know, three weeks or what have you. You'll get a bonus or a commission if you get a price close to 100, and uh, that's how you get. That's how they make their money. They don't really care where it's going to go. They just do the do the best they can by the uh, by the client, but they use the range. And obviously, when that range widens, uh, there's a bit more uh, panic in the market. The range tightens. That means all the orders are tightening up, and everyone's trying to accumulate at a really good average price. Let's go back to here. That's why you sort of see it here. Here you see over here to the left, you see much more volatility, you know, it's smashing up and smashing down. A lot more panic in there, because people, the orders coming into the market have a wider range, and institutions are saying, oh, you know, I've got to sell and there's no bid, so, okay, we'll go in from, we'll go here between 70 and 75, and then they say, well, you know, there's no bids there, let's just drop it from 75 to 65 to get to find the bids. And that's what the, that's what the market makers do. The market makers will use that range to go and find the market to, Buy or sell the large uh, chunk of shares, sorry, chunk of shares with um, folks in the market. And as you can see here, they actually had a go here. See how it tightened up? Wide range, widespread, so I should say. Tightened up, they actually had a go here and something happened because it failed because it didn't follow through, no demand follow through. But here we have tightness again, you know, wide ranging uh, orders, a bit of panic. Tightening up here, so people are really uh, trying to accumulate. It's great to see tightness before a market breaks out because you know that the big boys are really trying to get their uh, accumulation of stock at a low co low average price. Okay, so then when it, when it, when it gets, um, explodes up, the big boys, they put an order and they put in here, for example, they might put an order in 80 to 85 or 
85 to 90. They're really hitting the bid here. The ranges are going up. That price actually follows up quite aggressively. They're actually yeah, not, they're not accumulating here. They're actually using less volume to push the price up. They're actually marking it up deliberately. They've brought their pile of stock float down. They say, yes, we've got enough here. We've got an investment here. I've, I've accumulated my 100 million or whatever of stock down here. Now I'm going to use 10 million and with other market participants, of course, and we're going to get the price up. And then I might sell 50 million of my 100 million up here or whatever I've accumulated up here. So that pretty much works with the composite man all doing the same thing and what have you. So anyway, that's back to, let's go back to the GAN logic. So here we have a fit. So we have a tightness and we see that we see that the demand is hitting the 1 by 2 GAN angle. So we look, ah, this is attractive. We see the tightness with our Wyckoff logic and we see the GAN world and the Richard Wyckoff logic coming together. So we have a breakout. So then what do you do? Well, then you put your, you can start putting GAN angles around your last points of supply. And as you can see here, I have to get rid of the other ones. It's getting a bit messy. I think it was that one, wasn't it? Okay. Um, yeah. oh. See right at the tight here. It's following that once again. It was following the uh, two by one. And as you can see here, oh, I'll go back to you. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, you know, all the lows are pretty close together, so the GAN angles run up the chart pretty close together. What it, but what this shows here, price was marked up in a in a GAN angle of two units of uh, two units of price to one unit of time. Very aggressive. And if you're a momentum trader or what have you, you want to be hunting at least where price is moving of two units of price to one unit of time. We did our Wyckoff logic here. We knew that the market was going through a bit of a distribution here that turned into a reaccumulation. And what was what was more attractive to the Wyckoff mind is when you saw the GAN angles capture price action on the 45 degree line. So what they're what that what that basically saying is that Mr. Market, the composite man, did not want price to slow down beyond one unit of price to one unit of time which pretty much confirms a brilliant trend. When price holds above the 45 degree line, you know you have a powerful trend. And once you saw some action over here with the Wyckoff logic with the spring close to the 45 degree line, the test the spring here, tightness here, there's the losers who are trying to sell it, really pretty much gave up. I mean, if they understood again, they wouldn't even be in there. I mean, I don't know why they bother. Anyway, here we actually knew the price was smashing up, and they here this, that's why we get this massive uh, price explosion is because the picture down here was so attractive to the buyers um, and the you know it was an explosion of price up but I can tell you from uh, my experiences is that so for some reason GAN angles are more popular in the Asian markets than they and, have, and the foreign exchange markets than that I've sort of seen with American com uh, uh, commentators you'll scan blogs all around the world and American and and uh, you don't really see a lot of gain angles, but in the Asia ones, they they have found gain angles quite attractive. Don't know why. Anyway, that's a that's a quick overview of ha of having your two two minds working here. Your Wyckoff logic, understanding supply and demand, where Mr. The market, the composite man's moving in to take things over, and then applying a, a price and time test with your gain angles uh, to work out uh, how. You know, time is relative to price action. There's actually a further study. I haven't actually done it here, but actually, you'll actually do some study with cycles, to see if price action is the highs and the lows are moving within a cyclical pattern. They probably are in here, but I haven't actually had time to cover it here. That's yeah, not too bad. Um, so thanks for watching. We've called this sort of uh, technical analysis or thinking called Wyckoff Logic 2.0. Take time to review the site. Thank you very much.